Okay, so we're going to continue and what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about secondary bonding. This is what we're going to be talking about, okay? Secondary bonding. So primary bonding was ionic bonding, metallic bonding and covalent bonding. So what is secondary bonding? So let me explain this to you. So I'm going to use this page here to explain. Now first and foremost, what I want you to know is secondary bonding okay secondary bonding only applicable applicable for covalent molecules okay okay only applicable for covalent molecules so if it's a metal or it's an ionic compound there is no secondary bonding. Metallic bonding is the only type of bonding and ionic bonding is the only type of bonding in ionic compounds, okay? So metallic bonding is the only type of bonding in metals and ionic bonding is the only type of bonding in ionic compounds. So when you talk about secondary bonding, we are only talking about covalent molecules. That's what we're talking about. And even when we talk about covalent molecules, we are talking about simple simple covalent molecules okay because the opposite of simple covalent molecules is network network covalent macro molecules okay so at this moment you may not know what i'm talking about but just to digress a little bit, these macromolecules we're talking about are things like diamond, okay, uh, silicon, silicon dioxide, all right, uh, silicon, silicon carbide. So these are examples of where uh, there is no secondary bonding. Okay, there is no secondary bonding although they are covalent so so these are examples okay so let's talk about this back again secondary bonding only applicable for covalent molecules so please know this right only covalent molecules is not for metals and not for ionic compounds okay settle now we talk about simple covalent molecules is generally all molecules except the ones i've just mentioned the diamond silicon dioxide silicon carbide all right, so do, do, everything else, like for example, let's say carbon dioxide, um, let's say water, let's say oxygen, let's say nitrogen, ethanol, okay, CH3, CH2, ethanol, even uh, petroleum, let's say let's see 20 H42, wow, this, this guy, this is a huge guy here. 20 carbons and 42 hydrogens, this also has secondary bonding, okay, although it's a very big molecule. So secondary bonding, what I want you to know is secondary bonding is responsible, responsible, responsible for, for melting points, boiling point, Okay, things like density, melting points, boiling points, density, um, and whatever else physical things that you can think about. Okay, it is responsible for secondary bonding. All right, so it is not covalent bonding because you know sometimes students get confused. If somebody asks you a question, hey, can you tell me why carbon dioxide has very low melting point and very low boiling point? Why? Okay. Sometimes students think, oh, uh, they will say covalent bonds, uh, covalent bonds are weak. Uh, this is an absolutely wrong answer. Covalent bonds are not weak. They are very strong. And boiling points, melting point has got nothing to do with covalent bonds. So leave covalent bonds aside. Okay, we're talking about secondary bonding. So if you have like carbon dioxide, let's say this is one carbon dioxide molecule, you have another carbon dioxide molecule, you have another carbon dioxide molecule, another carbon dioxide molecule. The bonding that exists between the molecules, okay, between the molecules. 
That is what we are talking about. Okay, the attraction that exists between the molecules is what we're talking about. So this is what secondary bonding is. Okay, this is what secondary bonding is. And this is what is responsible for the melting point, boiling point, density, uh, viscosity, and so on. Okay, because covalent bond will exist inside of this. So like between carbon to an oxygen there would be covalent bond. So that one is different. Okay, that's covalent bond. So secondary bonding. So we talk about secondary bonding, right? What the most most common secondary bonding is called dispersion. Dispersion forces. This is the most common. Then the second one is called um, dipole dipole okay dipole dipole this dipole dipole there are two types of dipole dipole normal normal dipole dipole and a strong dipole dipole stronger dipole dipole a normal strength dipole dipole and a stronger dipole dipole and this stronger dipole dipole is called hydrogen hydrogen bonding okay and this one is called dipole dipole okay so this this remains to be called dipole dipole but the stronger one is called hydrogen bonding so we have dispersion we have dipole dipole all right and then we have others which are lesser lesser like for example ion dipole okay ion dipole this is between two different species i mean two different things between ions and dipoles okay and then there is also things like dipole dipole induced dipole that's another example okay dipole induced dipole so the important thing here is called dispersion forces dipole dipole normal dipole dipole and stronger hydrogen bonding when you learned this in high school when you learned this in high school all of these things were quite easily called when the walls forces okay so in high school we call this when the walls forces that is what we call this all right so in the next video what i'll do is i'll talk to you about dispersion forces and then dipole dipole and um the hydrogen bonding okay in the next video we'll stop here